Hi, this is John from Mixtree.com. Today we're talking about shampoos, specifically bad shampoos, shampoos you should stay away from. What we'll do is go through the ingredient list and I'll tell you what to look out for when you're buying a shampoo for you or your child. Now, shampoos are a necessary evil. It is important for us. We need it to be able to wash out the hair before we put all the other bits in it or get the dirt out. Now, it is so big, as a matter of fact, it's like 50% of all the sales of hair products in the world are shampoos. But you have to be careful when you choose it. You have to make sure you get the right one. And the main thing you look out for is the detergent part of it, which I'm going to explain a little bit more. So if you look at a shampoo, I look at the ingredient list. The first one is water. It makes up about 40 to 70 percent, depending on the shampoo. But 40 to 70 percent of water, that's normal. The next bit is the detergent, or they call it surfactant. Now, some manufacturers put in a, a multitude of um, two or three or so, but that's what helps in washing out your hair. That's what gets out the dirt, the muck, all the you know leftover food if it's your child, all the other stuff on it. <clears throat> And after that, you know, they have the thickeners. Uh, thickeners are in charge of um, making it, uh, you know, basically, it's, it's what it means, it thickens the shampoo. So when you use it, it's not so runny, because it's mostly water, and all the other ingredients are normally watery, so the thickener gives you that thickness. And then you have the foam boosters. Uh, the foam boosters are what um, creates the lather when you use, when you're washing on your child's hair. So people think about foam when they wash hair to say, the shampoo is working, you know, so people look at it as a good shampoo because it lathers. I'll talk a bit about that later. And then the rest of the ingredients are put into other the brackets of others, uh, which would be, that's where, you know, they're throwing the conditioners, for example, or they have the colorant to give it a certain color, or the perfume to give it a smell, so people throw protein in it. Um, but that's kind of what they use to give it its character, uh, or, or well, let's say to brand it. Detergents are the most important ingredients in the shampoo. That's why you buy the shampoo anyway. That's the one in charge of washing out your hair, the active ingredients. They're called surfactants. The most popular one by far are sulfate-based detergents. You recognize them easily when you look at the back because they will have sulfate at the end of it. The most popular ones are like sodium lauryl sulfate. There are some ammonium lauryl sulfate. If you look at the back, you will recognize them. It's very easy. Now they are highly effective in washing our hair. They're highly effective in getting dirt out and they are very cheap to make. These two combination is dynamic. It's really good for, cost, uh, for our manufacturers to use it because of that. And you find it everywhere. You find it on toothpaste, you find it on a uh, washing up liquid, you find detergents used to wash your clothes. It's very popular. Now, the thing about it is you have to be careful when you use it. Not only will it strip out the dirt, it takes out your natural hair oils, the sebum. Uh, sebum is very important for creating the waterproof in your hair. It helps fight against dandruff. Uh, it helps you with, you know, when it's sunny and so on. And most importantly, it stops the dryness and the cracking of hair. Imagine then using shampoos that absolutely strips that out. It causes some all forms of irritation, splitting, drying of hair and so on, if you use it all the time. So, try to stay away from them. There are alternatives. There are many alternatives. What I'm going to do is, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to have a list of um, sodium-based, uh, sulfate-based ones, and then alternatives that you could use or look out for. Uh, the hair products on our website will not have uh, sulfate-based uh, detergents. So try to stay away from them. Now let's talk about foam boosters, or what creates the lather in your hair. Um, when you use a shampoo, and you rub it on your hair, it lathers. And many people look at that as the effective part of a shampoo. When they see it lathering, they'll think, or creating all the foam, they think it's working, it's doing its job. And some people actually choose shampoos just because of that. So let me try and discuss this myth a little bit. Lathering is important, that is true, but you don't need so much foam to show that it's working. When the detergent Bind with the dirt or the oils on the hair, it doesn't lather as much. When it doesn't bind, it lathers more. So because of it, that's why when you wash your hair with shampoo and you wash it the second time, it lathers even more. That's because most of the dirt is gone and the oils are gone. So even shampooing the second time, you get a lot more um, foam when you use it. So 
This is the interesting bit. The sulfate-based detergents lather more. The ones that are not sulfate-based don't lather as much. And it's unfortunate that people tend to look at it and say, okay, I'm going to choose the one that lathers more because it's better. And most of the time, it's the sulfate-based ones. And this is it. Uh, hopefully, this is helpful for you to actually understand a little bit more about what goes into a shampoo and the ingredients we think that you should stay away from. So as a quick summary, try to go for ingredients that doesn't have sulfate in it uh, because it will dry your hair, it will dry your child's hair. Uh, that, the sulfate-based ingredients, uh, they're not very good. I mean, you could look it up on the internet. When you have it on anything, it strips that thing. Uh, we normally put 1% or they say if you just put 1% in what you're using, but I absolutely doubt that most shampoos have just 1% in it. Uh, what we're going to do if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to have a list uh, of uh, sulfate based ingredients which I think you should stay away from and a list which I think you should actually lean more towards. Uh, I mean, this is a start for us if you if you've been following us. So this is the first, so this is my second video I'm putting out. So comments will really help me out. Tell me what you like, what you want to hear more of. Um, and Liz and I will try to talk a little bit about that. And uh, we're gonna create a channel on YouTube so you can follow us, but on our website, more importantly, we'll be given reviews of the products from our perspective of what we think is good and what we think is not good. Again, this is just our view. So leave us a feedback. Uh, you can send me an email, it's john at midstreets.com. Okay, thanks.